Dave Ramsey here, and welcome to Real Estate, The Ramsey Way. In this episode, we're talking about the true cost of buying a home, because if you want to make that new home you're dreaming of an actual reality, you need accurate expectations of the whole home buying situation and what it'll cost you. So stick around to figure out how much house you can really afford. Nathan's with us in Pensacola. Hi, Nathan. Welcome to The Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Uh, long-time listener. I appreciate your show and uh, definitely live by almost all the advice you have. Well, thank you. How can I help? Um, so um, <laughs> my wife and I um, are uh, looking at possibly buying a property. It's a little bit more expensive than what I'm used to buying. So um, right now we own a home, and uh, we're just trying to figure out uh, if it makes sense to uh, take our, our current investments and just basically liquidate our current investments and then now uh, go into debt with a mortgage um, that would be probably about a $300,000 mortgage after we're done with liquidating all of our expenses, all of our debt. I mean, I'm sorry, all of our uh, assets. Does okay. H- how old are you? Uh, we're 47, 47 and 46. Wait, all of your assets? You mean you're pulling retirement out? No, no, no. Um, the retirement I can't touch until uh, later, but we've got um, – uh, Listening to you guys, uh, like uh, smart investor kind of stuff, and uh, we we went with uh, a smart investor pro here in Pensacola. Pensacola. So, so, so got, you have uh, how much money in investments that are non-retirement? Um, probably about uh, six hundred k total. Okay, and your current residence has how much equity in it? About four hundred. Okay, so you're buying a million three house. It's going to be a little bit less than a million three, but it'll be uh, a little over a million. Okay. I missed how you get $300,000 in debt because I got a million dollars here, 600 and 400. So I guess uh, it, the mortgage might not be quite 300 then. Um, it'll be probably closer to 200 when we uh, when you have all the closing costs and everything into it. Okay. So you're talking about you're not going to net 400 out of your house. No, we should. We should net 400 out of the house. And you have 600 in investments. And savings and everything, yes. That's a million. And the house is a million. There's not $200,000 in closing costs. There's not a 20% closing cost. There's no such thing. So I guess it's just kind of an uneasy feeling going with a, a higher uh, home value. And, and just I guess the biggest thing that I have is, does it make sense to liquidate the uh, the investments that we have right now. I wouldn't buy the house if I didn't. Because you're, you're going to go into debt. So the, It's the same question of if I had a paid $4 million house, would I go borrow 600000 on it to put money into investments? No, I wouldn't. Not taking the money out of the investments and putting them on the house is the same thing as borrowing on your house to do that. So you should not buy the house unless you're willing to use the investments to do it. What's your household mm-hmm. income? Uh, right now, it's probably about 110. And how old are you guys? 48 and 46. Okay. Will you be able to afford the taxes on a million-dollar property at a, with $100,000 a year just to just to maintain the property, keep the lights on this thing, keep the yard mode? Uh, uh, yes, we will. Yeah, um, Florida's got some generous uh, disabled veterans uh, tax benefits. Okay. So why, why do you want to buy a million-dollar property? It's, it's something my wife and I have always dreamed about living on the water, and uh, this is an opportunity to do so right now. Okay. I don't think you're going to need a mortgage, or if you do, it's a very, very small one, and you're going to turn around and get that paid off as fast as you can. If you're sitting in this property debt-free uh, within a couple of years, then I'm fine with this idea if you want to do it. Um, it, it, the, the thing that's out of balance that you're feeling is, is that, um, the vast majority of your net worth is now tied up in your single family home that does not, that does not generate an income. It does grow in value, but it does not generate an income. And so, um, you know, you're going to have to really pour on the coals and, and build some investments by the fact that you don't have any house payment in the near future. Uh, to make this work. But no, you don't need a $300,000 mortgage. The numbers you keep giving me, that you act like they add up, and they don't add up. I mean, 600 and 400 is $1 million, and you buy a million-dollar house for a million dollars, and you use a million dollars, you shouldn't have a mortgage. Uh, and so 
Something about this makes me uncomfortable. Like, it makes me uneasy. That's a lot of... The reason is, is that all, everything you own is going into this house, except your retirement. Well... And uh, it it, it is, it's out of balance. It's too much, really. Yeah. Uh, But if you're paying cash for it, I think you can tolerate it as long as you turn around and start dumping money into retirement really, really quick. Uh, Would I do this if I were in your shoes? No, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. Maybe that's what I wouldn't either. Because I don't want that much of my net worth making $110,000 tied up in a single family house that does not create income. And I'm thinking of it, if the air conditioner goes out on this million dollar house, it's going to be an expensive repair. Or if the driveway needs to be, or if I got to do some plumbing well, work on a million dollars, it's all so expensive. Everything, I mean, it's 100% of the houses break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100% of them need crap done to them. And um, brand new no matter who built them, no matter where they are. I mean, I'm in a lot of real estate, and there's just, uh, they, they eat money. Yeah. So you're, to your point, that's good. Yeah, I think, I, I, you know, the more I sit here and talk this through, listening to John, too. I'm risk-averse, though, so let me say that out no, loud. I, but, I mean, I, I, there's just no margin here. There's no, there's no the, wiggle yeah, room. I keep coming back to margin. There's Something's no going to happen There's no life. wiggle room. What if you get sick or what if, if you get something? If life goes sideways, yeah. and right now you got a lot of wiggle room with 600000 in the bank. So probably what I would do is take your six hundred and pay off your current residence, uh, which you should have done anyway if you're listening to me. But that's that part where you said you just did part of what I teach. I remember <laughs> that part. I didn't drive by it. I heard it. And um, then, then I would save like a crazy person, and I might do this deal in five years where I've got 500000 left over. Hmm. After I buy it, now that start. If you had five hundred thousand left over non-retirement after you move in there, you do a million dollar house. One hundred ten thousand incomes is is low for a million dollar house, but if you're paying cash for it for whatever reason, it's okay. But you do need some liquidity, and it doesn't need to be freaking ninety percent of your net worth. Right. That's just that's out of balance. Or can you yeah. save up some money and and go multiple weeks? And stay at a lake house a year, and I mean, yeah. if you I, mean get the I, fix, I don't even but... mind if you buy. You know, if your dreams to live on the water, I agree. I like live on the water. I've yeah. got I've got properties on the water. I like it, but um, water water's amazing. Yeah, but the uh, but but it's not amazing if it steals your peace instead of gives you there peace. You yeah. So and there's no margin here, no mm-hmm. margin. It's dangerous. That's a dangerous deal. No, I wouldn't do it. I'm a, I'm gonna retract. I wouldn't do it because I don't like the fact there's no wiggle room. What I would do is I pay off my house today. And I'd start saving like a crazy person and make this a three to a five-year dream. And just keep piling up cash and keep investing with a paid-for house. But you're going to do what you're going to do because you already don't do some of the stuff we teach. So yeah. that's up to you. You get to decide. But that, that's that's what I would do if I woke up in your shoes. Um, I find people do, don't have margin with their time. They don't have it with their relationships. They don't have it with work. They don't have it with money. We just have a margin-free society now, man. Well, they just it it um there's friction. It grates. They get frayed ends. Yeah, and you get frayed at the ends, and it's just um because everything's pushed to the edge, yeah. and it, and it takes what would have normally been a blessing, and and you you know you add two doses of stress to it, and all of a sudden you don't the thing you were supposed to be in love with you hate. And we, when you think of it uh, psychologically, our brains were designed to to run at that level when. A lion was chasing us not to live like that. Yeah, it, not, it just yeah. rattles everything to our core. You know? <laughs> it's a big old house with a lion chasing you around inside that. You just parked a lion in the front yard. Yeah, that's right. Andrea starts off this hour in Dallas, Texas. Hey, Andrea, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Oh, Dave, it's good to talk to you again. You too. Um, thank you for having me on your show. Well, thank you. Um, I don't know. You probably, I don't know if you remember, I actually met you back in 2019 at your studio. My husband and I stopped by and I, I, I'm a balloon artist. I made a bunch of balloons for your grandkids. Oh, thank um, you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, darling, I'm sorry. I've met so many people. I can't remember my name. So, but I'm glad oh, you're here. How can right. we help? <laughs> okay. Well, I was hoping you could help me with a, a little disagreement I'm having with my husband. Um, We've been married 10 years, and I um, have listened to you longer and got him on to the uh, the total money makeover, and we followed you, and we're able to get debt-free. Good. And we like it. He likes it a lot. Good. And But now we are having um, our second baby due in November, and he's having to work from home, and I'm nesting, 
and we feel like it's time to move up in house and we have a little bit of a disagreement. I feel like I found like the ideal dream house and he feels like it's too much and um it would it would cause us to have a mortgage again for a little while and he just he just doesn't want to do that. Mm. And I'm just like don't feel like I want to settle when we're going to be in the house hopefully a long time. Mm. So um that's Okay, that's so what is your current it. home worth? Um, we are hoping after realtor fees that we can get about $300,000 out of it. Um, okay. and what, what would seen, the other house cost? The other house that we're looking at, um, our realtor thinks we could get it if we made an offer for four ninety five. dollars So a, a move of 200000 Do you have any yeah. money saved above the three hundred? We do. We've got our emergency fund of sixteen grand, which we're not going to touch. Correct. And then in other various accounts, we've managed to save up about a little over a hundred grand. Okay, so you're only a hundred thousand so, dollars in disagreement. Basically. Yeah. If you had yeah. another hundred k, would he be okay with the five hundred thousand dollar house? He he would be thrilled with it. His thing is like so some of these things. It's not are, too much house. It's no want, debt that he wants. Not, Right. It's not too much house. It's the no debt. He says, yeah. this house is fancy. It's a want. It's not a need. Yeah. We shouldn't go into debt for a want. Okay. And, um, but, okay. I, I, I got it. I got it. And so what's your household income? So 2021, we did a combined 101,000. Mm -hmm. How quickly can you he, save a hundred um, grand? Mm, I don't know. Um, we... I mean, if we... Less than three years, probably? Two to three um, years. Two and a half years, maybe? Two to three years. Maybe. maybe. No, yeah, definitely. We're projected to do one yeah, definitely. To if you had to do it okay. to save your life, you could save a hundred grand in two years, but three, you could definitely do it. Okay. Because you'd be living on beans and rice again in order to hit this goal, to do two years. Mm -hmm. Three years, you can definitely yep. do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, or you can pick up. Do you have anything else you can sell? Oh, not nothing that's like worth much. I mean, you got you got expensive like cars. No, they're they're used cars and they are paid off and they're you know kind of old and okay. They're not expensive. Have. Okay. What about going to a I four hundred thousand dollar house and you pay cash for it? Have you looked into what that would look like? Um, we we've um, we're still looking and keeping our eyes open. We haven't ruled it out. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so here's the deal. Uh, what we're really arguing about is not whether you have too much house. If I'm understanding your outline, what you're really okay. arguing about is the hundred uh, is whether we go in debt or not. Right. And you your husband's going. I finally got free. I can't walk willingly into another bear trap. I can't That's do it. I can't, I can't I can't swallow the pill. As much as I love you, okay. as much as I want you to have what you want, I just can't go back there. It makes me throw up into my mouth. Right. That's and then what part of me is also like inflation is going up and what if I buy too much house and then like the, no, the country's gone crazy and yeah. then I can't like feed No, you don't have to worry something. about that. You don't have to worry about that. What you've got okay. to worry about is what you can control. Your bottom okay. line is you guys are arguing about a hundred grand and two to three years. Mm -hmm. That's what you're arguing about. Yeah. You're not really arguing about yeah. whether to move, if moving is valid, whether the $500,000 house is too big a house, uh, whether we're really not arguing about any of those things. We're just a hundred grand short of doing what you want to do and you're willing to go in debt and he's not. Correct. That's what it comes down to. And so That's once good. you quantify it that way, it gives you some real good points for discussion. Um, I don't think either one of you are in the stupid zone with this. If you took out a little mortgage and paid it off real fast, it doesn't violate our guidelines. But I've got to personally agree with your husband. Once I got out of debt, you weren't going to drag me back in kicking and screaming under any circumstances. There wasn't anything Sharon wanted bad enough for me to do that, or I wanted bad enough for me to do that, ever. And I was actually more likely to want something than she was. Mm. But you couldn't get me to do it again. So I kind of understand where your husband's coming from. I don't think George and I have an answer for it. There's you. no one right or wrong here. You guys have to get on the same page of whatever yeah. you do going forward. And, and I don't think you're buying this house unless you both come into agreement. That's for sure. Here's a dose of reality for you. Drowning in a house payment every month is what's called being house poor. And it means you won't have enough money for your other financial goals. 
But here's some good news. You don't need a degree in economics to figure out what your house payment should cost. Just check out our free mortgage calculator to get a clear idea of what your monthly payment should look like. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash mortgage calculator or click the link in the show notes to start crunching the numbers. Brett is with us in Provo, Utah. Hi, Brett. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Oh, thanks, Dave. Thanks for having me on. Sure. What's up? Uh, so me and my family, we have been renting for the last year while paying off student loans. Uh, we paid off 115000 of student loans. Way to go. And, awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, so we're at a point now where we're looking uh, to save up for a down payment on a house. Um, and the house we would be looking to buy, it would take us about three years to, to get a down payment for that house. Um, but we're wondering if maybe it might just be smarter to wait another three years, so a total of six years, to pay for a house in cash. How much of a down payment are you doing in three years? 50%? Yeah, it's pretty much close to that. Yeah, houses are pretty How did you determine 50% as a down payment? Uh, just for the house we were looking at for no, like 800000 And you, you said you can do 50% of right. the house price in three years. Right. Yes. 400000 uh, three, uh, yeah, I guess 350 is what I was looking at. Yeah. Huh? Okay. And what do you make? Uh, 260. Way to go. Good for you. How old are you guys? Uh, I'm 32 and my wife is 29. Okay. Well, this is one of the, uh, maybe the only answer that I ever give here on the air that is, um, not what I would do, but what is okay, okay. to do. Okay. What I do, the way I live my life for the last 30 plus years now since I went broke is I don't borrow money, mm -hmm. period, for anything yeah. ever. And right. so I have to figure out a way to cash flow it because there is nothing that I want badly enough or that I'm scared enough of to go in debt for it. I have been there, done that. I didn't like the T-shirt. I'm not doing it anymore, Okay. Uh, I yeah. truly do believe that the Bible is telling the truth, that the borrower is slave to the lender, and I truly don't borrow money. And mm -hmm. I do believe that that is the shortest path to wealth, by right. the way. Okay? Yes. Uh, the, the starting few years is rough, um, right. but the the ending years are amazing. <laughs> yeah. So... Uh, 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 now, having said all of that, then it's the only advice we give here on the air that I don't personally follow, and that is if you take out a mortgage with a good, strong down payment, 50% is more than a good, strong. A good, strong down payment would be 10 or 15 or something like that. 20 would avoid PMI. That's good. And your payment on a 15-year fix is no more than a fourth of your take-home pay. If you did that in your case... You could then pay that house off within six years. Right, right. And if you could pay yeah, cash for it in six years, you could pay it off in six years. And obviously, anyone who pays their home off in six years is way weird compared to the culture. <laughs> <laughs> so you're you're weird no matter where we are on this spectrum. Yeah, and you're and yeah, you're yeah. heading in the in the you, you know your your face is under the column of smart people no matter what we do on this spectrum. That's right. So either yeah. one of those is fine. So it's just a matter of so is there some any... would call me a legalist. Some would call me a purist. Uh, some would just call me not a hypocrite, but um, <laughs> but that, that I don't borrow. So you can do either by Ramsey guidelines, anywhere in between those two things, and be there. So you could put down 50%, you could put down 80%, you could put down 20% on a 15-year fix where the payment's no more than a fourth of your take-home pay, and it wouldn't be in this case, and then turn and pay it off as fast as you can. All of that is within our guidelines because we know that that's going to lead you to wealth. Brett, how old right. are you? I'm 32. Way 32. to go, man. Way to go. Amazing. What do you do for a living? So I'm a nurse anesthetist. Ah, good. Very good. You're killing it, man. So yeah, and, so and that was where I was kind of having the the question between the two, just because is it is there any measure on if it's harder for kids to move when they're older? That was kind of what we were going between two. I mean, 
I wouldn't want to wait. I wouldn't want to move in high school if that's what you're asking. I think that yeah, kids yeah, are yeah. very resilient. I think that by the time they, you know, once they put down roots, if you get into those high school years, it can be a little bit tough. But mm -hmm. I mean, you can recover from anything. But yeah, when they're how you have you've got kids now? How? So the oldest is seven. So uh -huh. seven, five, and three. Seven. They're all so right. He would be thirteen. You know, if we waited the full six years to to pay. Well, that's also assuming you get absolutely no increases in income. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah I. Yeah. True. It's a good point. Which is weird because when I start saving towards something that I want really bad, what I'll do is work my butt off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And my income goes up, and you know, I'm able to just attack it. And so right. my guess is that it won't take you as long as the math on a straight line without any increases in pay says, okay, right. that you should have, because your intensity will go up and your income will probably go up both mm -hmm. during this time. So it'll probably be four or five years. But same thing's true of paying the house off. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If you bought it and we're living in it. So uh, we're not going to yell at you for either one. Um, okay. uh, uh, I just love the options that you're looking at. I, yeah. I, I love all, that all, you're calling in here talking about 50% down or 100% down. That's a wonderful quandary to be in. You've yeah, got options. You've got your head in the right place. That's for sure. Yeah. And so, again, I truly do believe these principles. And so I truly believe that if I live them, I'm going to be the safest in the event of a pandemic. I'm sitting in a building that's worth... I don't know what's this thing worth now three or four hundred <laughs> three or four hundred million dollars and it's, pay, and it's paid for and yep. it's paid for and so nobody I didn't have to worry during the pandemic that we couldn't make the payments here yeah okay that allows this bald head to lay on a pillow and sleep you know <laughs> it just is a different world Christine is with us in Cheyenne Wyoming hi Christine how are you great how are you doing better than I deserve what's up um, thank you so much for taking my call. So uh, my husband and I are new listeners of yours, and um, we're on baby steps four, five, and six. We have no debt except for our mortgage. Good. But we're concerned that our mortgage is a bit high. Um, it doesn't quite follow your ratios, so I just wanted to talk that through with you and see if um, we should keep going on or make a change. Okay. In this case, our ratios... Uh don't matter as much in the case of a mortgage uh, payment as a percentage of your income as why we have the ratios. Now, that matters a lot, okay? okay. The why is simply uh, if you use up all your money on your house payment, you don't have any money. It's called house poor, right? right. And that will cause you, with if, you, if you're living with a super high house payment, even though you're already out of debt and you're baby step four, five, and six, it'll keep you from investing long-term, keep you from your generosity goals. Um, and it, in some cases, if it's super high, if for people people feel forced uh, to take a car payment because they don't save up for a car because they don't have any room to save up for a car or something like that. So that's the reason we tell people to not get a super high house payment like most of the culture tells you to do. That, and so the, once you kind of understand that, then you can kind of back into your particulars and say, you know, okay, what are we what are we violating on the twenty five percent of your take home pay on a fifteen year fixed, and um, and how is that going to be okay, given that we don't want to be house poor? So, how much is your house payment? Thirty nine hundred. Say again. Thirty nine hundred. And your monthly take home pay is eleven thousand. Okay, so you're about 34%. Right. Okay. And um, what do you guys do for a living? Uh, my husband is in supply chain. Is what? And I say, he's in supply chain, and I stay home with our kids. Supply chain. Oh, God, I can't hear. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, supply chain. All right. And uh, he's killing it. Um. So, how many raises is he, now? Because the last two years don't count. What do you guys feel like the trajectory of his income is? Is it going to go up substantially in the next three years? I think so. Which makes this conversation not needed, moot, right? Okay. 
Yeah. Because, I mean, if it goes from 33% to 28% to 25% with three raises, because your house payment stays the same and your income goes up, then we're not worried about you being house poor long term, correct? Correct. Yeah, so that that's one fix for this. But if he had two wild years based on supply chain backup, and he crushed it, and he's going to settle back into nine thousand a month, now you got a problem. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So what are you looking at on his income? Do you think? I think it'll go up. I don't think he'll. Okay. It'll go down. If it goes down, you need to reevaluate this house. Okay. If it goes, as long as it is has an upward trajectory in the next thirty six to forty eight months you're not going to be stuck there with all your money going to a house payment and not being able to fund your kid's college fund. Or See, having an air conditioner break and you got to get a, go to a credit union to get to be able to pay for it, right? Right. Well, Although we do have emergency funds. That's, so right. that's, that's right. That's right. Good. Yeah. So just don't get yourself to where you're there. That's the whole point of the thing, you see? Uh, and and yeah. so you don't, you don't need ramsey to tell you how to manage your life. You just, but you, but a good rule period, whether Ramsey's in your discussion or not is don't be house poor don't have a house payment that takes up all your money right. makes you broke and so um but i think you sound like you're okay it's not ideal if you were getting ready to buy a home i would tell you to back off don't be so house uh you know but you're there i wouldn't tell you to move over this you're not trapped and hopelessly mathematically disabled you know so i, I wouldn't tell you to do that but uh, but you don't have any room. It's got to go up. Uh, it can't go back, and you don't have any wiggle room because if it gets if it goes down much and stays down very long, you're going to be forced into a different property. But right now, I think you got a lot of house, and in Cheyenne, Wyoming, that's a big freaking house. That's a big dog right there. Well done. Good for you. I bet it's fun. Listen, I know some of you are thinking that buying a home the way we teach is next to impossible with home prices where they are right now. But that's why my best advice is patience. Don't give in to the temptation to stretch your dollars and buy a home that's out of your price range. It's just not worth sacrificing your other financial goals, like your retirement, your kid's college. Just be a grown-up about it and be patient. Thanks for listening today. Share this with your friends and family who you think will enjoy it. And be on the lookout for our next episode all about navigating this crazy real estate market.